Little Church in Fort Smith, Arkansas, we welcome you online. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed be you, Jesus, 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 now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. From you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. That we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> reading from Esther. So, the king and Haman went in to feast with Queen Esther. On the second day, as they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom, it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, If I have won your favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me. That is my petition and the lives of my people. That is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, to be annihilated. If we have been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would hell my peace, but no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king. Then King Osarius said to Queen Esther, Who is he and where is he who has presumed to do this? Esther said, A foe and enemy, the wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. Then Harbona, one of the eunuchs in attendance on the king, said, Look, the very gallows that Haman has prepared for Mordecai whose word saved the king, stands at Haman's house, 50 cubits high. And the king said, hang him on that. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that that he had prepared for Mordecai. 
Then the anger of the king was abated. Mordecai recorded these things and sent letters to all the Jews who were in all the provinces of King Aharis, both near and far, and joining them that they should keep the 14th of the month Adar and also the 15th day of the same month, year by year. As the days on which the Jews gained relief from their enemies and as the month that had been turned for them from sorrow into gladness and from mourning into a holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days of sending gifts of food to one another and presents to the poor. The word of the Lord. reading from James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go into hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies. And the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. And a verse that seems to collect all that our readings are is found as the last verse of our psalm today, which is part of the invocation in Compline. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Powerful words motivate us to action. My father was a powerful man in my world. You have may, may have had a powerful grandmother or maybe even someone who was a mentor. Not because they are intimidating in any way. In fact, my father survived polio as a child and his body did not allow him to be intimidating. Instead, his ideals his faithfulness and spirituality were his strength. And his insistence on doing the right thing was a force like gravity that was always around us. He held out expectations, and when they were not met, uh oh, here it comes, he was very disappointed. A powerful tool. It was like a physical force, but it was just the ideals and the life and the words that he brought. It was so much more powerful and influential than anything that was forced. It was a power that touches the soul when all the actions come from that internal place. Today our readings are a set in the works of God that do not come from places of physical power or political power or any conventional means of power. Instead, they are a collection of stories and reflections and teachings 
that remind us that God uses our faithfulness rather than external powers to work God's good in this world. Like the smallest of seeds, the mustard seed, just a tiny bit of faith, grows to do amazing things. It's in those humble acts, the boring part of our everyday rhythmed faithfulness that seem to move mountains, that gives us strength that we need. It's the quiet acts of love that touch the hearts of others and alter the course of the lives who seem to move within our circles. Our reading from the book of Esther is the only time in our three-year cycle that we hear her story. She's an orphan from an enslaved people, one with no power. She changes the course of her people and is remembered and celebrated as faithful in a feast called Purim in the Jew Jewish calendar. It's an intricate story of how one goes from being an orphan of an enslaved people who are carried up into Persia and through the seeming workings of God, doors are open so that this Esther will have a place of influence if she can conjure up the strength of soul to be able to take the chance to help those who are around her. Her uncle Mordecai, earlier in the story, says the iconic words from this book. Perhaps Esther, he says to her, with gentle faithfulness, not of powerful masculinity and muscles, but of care and compassion to nurture her, to touch her soul, and to let God do the work when he says, perhaps you were brought to this point for such a time as this. For such a time as this means that a lifetime of choices and faithful actions, without our knowing it, has prepared us for a moment or moments of truth along our life's pathway. That unseen strength of God is working deep within us through all of those boring, rhythmic, places of preparing our soul to be in communion with God, to be able to hear God's voice, not with our ear, but in our soul, to be able to experience the very grace of God in circumstances we don't know how to navigate. But we know that somehow our heart will lead us. We don't even know the right way to put a phrase on it. As a matter of fact, Esther is the only book in the Bible that never utters the word God. There's no Lord. There's no Savior. It's all about God who is there drawing us and is ever present, but works through the foundation that has been laid in our heart and our soul so that we can face what we need to face when we're in that time such as this. The story turns into a resurrection story, one where inevitable death was for her people, an edict and a law that you heard Rod read, a law that would say you could kill everyone who was Jewish. And Esther breaks all protocol and all law, putting her life on the line because she had the closest access to the only one who could stop that force. And from, what, from deep within her, 
she brought that strength at such a time as this. It becomes a resurrection story. And it says that, and as the month that had been turned for them from sorrow into gladness, from mourning into a holiday, all would make from that day on a day of feasting and gladness on that day, sending gifts of food to one another and presents to the poor. The life of faithfulness brings us to those places in our life where we don't know if we will have the strength. We cannot know the outcome, but we can only step forward in faith, trusting that God has done the work that needs to be done. And when we take that step forward, we understand that the strength of God in our soul is that mustard seed that grows our gifts, our talents, our abilities into something beyond, something beyond anything we could have ever seen. It's exactly what James is talking about. As he says, when you are a person who is ill, call together the elders of the church. Have them surround you. Sickness, emotional brokenness are healed in the community of people being called together, hands being laid on that person a sacrament of anointing with oil, and it availeth much. Not saying how, just that it does. Faith finds a way. It's Elijah that prayed, and rain stopped, and he prayed again, and rain came. We don't understand the impact or the power of prayer, but somehow it shapes our heart and our soul, and that has an impact on the world that surrounds us. It's a soul perspective that faith brings to us. Sometimes I'm afraid we might sort of say we're the only ones that have that insight. Just like John with, the, with Jesus. Teacher, we saw someone trying to cast out demons, but we said, no, you're not one of us. And Jesus says, no. That's not our perspective. Our perspective is that those who would open their hearts to God are going to do the good that God has called them to do. Our world now is filled with so many denominations. But each one brings such a unique perspective. Like a diamond that sort of shows its one ray and shaft of light. God is at work in so many different ways. As we work with others, we see the good that God is doing in the way that faith has developed other lives. You will hear today Gene Koljeski, one of our co-directors of our SAC Lunch program, talk about how a program that started out with one person giving a can of Viennese sausages out a back door brings together many different churches, businesses, volunteers from everywhere. Just two weeks ago, the Community Rescue Mission began their rehabilitation of their kitchen and of their, of their kitchen and of their eating facilities. They're not alone in this world or in this neighborhood. They asked if they could use our kitchen so that they could continue to cook the meals for the families who live there. And of course, we are partners with them. We are working for the good that God is doing through the institutions in our neighborhood. It lets us see that there's more going on than we just have in our own life. There is a world that God is doing because God is talking to so many people today. Today, we hear in our reading faithfulness, humility, working in a powerful way, allowing God's kingdom to be shaped out of our humble offering. The meager gift that we give becomes great in God's hands. And when we become open, we see that within us has been formed what is needed for such a time as this. Amen.
And as a bedrock of the faith that we share as the Christian church, we stand together and we declare our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed that's found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate for the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshiping God. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 3, can be found in the Red Book of Common Prayer on page 387. Father, we pray for the mission agencies and their work throughout the Anglican Communion, for the Episcopal Church, for the life and ministry of the Diocese of Arkansas, for the ministry of St. John's Parish, and for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, for the presiding bishop, Michael, for our bishop, Larry, for Father Mike, for Tim, and for the staff of St. John's Parish, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all politicians who govern, especially President Joe, Governors Asa and Kevin, and Mayor George, for all who hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We ask your prayers for those who are ill, shut in, or for whom we are called to intercede on our parish prayer list. Gregory, B, George, Chris, Sal, Bill, Debbie, Wanda, Scott, Carl, Carlene, Kimberly, Orlin, Dennis, Tim, Jim, Rebecca, Gray, Pat, Ron, Hester, Mike, Malcolm, Ronnie, Jackie, Andrea, Mike, Larry, Lee, Jim, Catherine, and David. We ask your prayers for those celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, for all those serving our country in the military, and for all the health care workers. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others.
Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask with what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now returning to page number 360, as we kneel together, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John's this morning. We'd like to welcome any visitors we have uh, here present and uh, through the video feed this morning. Just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, beginning October 10th, Sunday morning education hour will return to St. John's. Father Champlin will be uh, conducting a study of the books of Samuel and Kings. So we encourage everyone to please participate uh, in the new education hour. And it will begin at, uh, says 9.30 in the bulletin. I believe they start gathering around 9.15. Uh, one other announcement I'd like to uh, make is, let me get the date. Uh, on Saturday, October 9th, uh, the Saturday before that day, uh, there will be a fall cleanup here at St. John's. And uh, we are calling all hands on deck once again, as many people as we can get to come out and help uh, to clean up our grounds. Uh, we desperately need it at this time as we're still trying to manage uh, this one on our own. So uh, thank you for uh, helping out on that. And uh, there are other announcements in your bulletin. Please take time and read. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And as I mentioned in our sermon today is Sack Lunch Sunday. We focus on our Sack Lunch program a whopping big one time a year. Uh, and so I'd like to turn our microphone over to Jean Koljeski, who is a co-director of the SAC Lunch Program, and I'm going to let you, how about if you use our lectern, would that be good for you? Okay, perfect. And Jean's an 8 o'clocker if you don't know her by, by face or by face mask. 
morning. Every year I do this, I wonder, well, what shall I say this year? What did I say last year? Is it boring? And so I reflected on what I wanted to do this year, and I thought about the words that Father Logger used last week in his sermon, talking about the roots going deep to sustain us through hard times, the slime or the hard times that we'd like to forgotten, wish that we didn't have to go through. And I'm going to add one to that, and I'm going to add the pearls, the things that we have learned when we have gone through the slime time to make us stronger and go farther. So with that, I will start with the roots. The roots of the SAC Lunch Program are very deep here at St. John's. If you didn't know this, Mary Weiss started this program 35 years ago. She sat at the 8 o'clock service right there, and 35 years ago, Mary saw people who were hungry standing around on 6th and B. And so she felt this was wrong, and she started serving food to these people who were there. Anybody who was hungry, no questions asked. As time went on, the congregation, the parishioners of St. John, supported this program with money and with uh, volunteer service. It was all done by St. John's. So you can see the roots of the program are deep, and also the roots about caring about people who are hungry in this community are very deep here at St. John's. Now I'm going to skip ahead to 2008 and talk about the first year that I saw stress or recall stress or a time of slime for the program. 2008 is when the economy went bust, all right? We had a high unemployment rate. We had people who uh, were unemployed. We had people who were having paid cut because of the, uh, the economy at that time. And we had a line at the SAC lunch program that wrapped around the Sequest building. And the SAC lunch program had no money. We had no money. And the priest at that time gave us money through their discretionary fund to help us through the end of the year. At that time, there were two people who were really in, uh, overseeing a lot of the things for the SAC lunch program, and that was Bernie Harper and Jeannie Parham. And through their ingenuity, and they said, let us reach out to the other churches in the community. Let us share this ministry with other people. And that was the beginning of sharing our program. With that sharing came more financial support and came more volunteers. Another thing that we looked is Judy Stilwell is a master of money. She watches every penny that we have. And at that time, we were looking and we saw we were putting mayonnaise and mustard on every sandwich. Mayonnaise is very expensive. We did away with the mayonnaise on all the meat lunches, and we stretched our dollars a little bit farther. Another thing that we did is she looked at cost us 30, well, uh, 20 cents for a meat sandwich at that time, 20 cents a lunch. Judy then looked and saw that we were paying 30 cents for pimento cheese lunches because we were buying the pimento cheese from Sam's. We did away with the pimento cheese, but lo and behold, Somebody by the name of Janice McClure from Central Press says, I can make that homemade pimento cheese. We have homemade, since that day forward, we have homemade pimento cheese. It costs about 21 cents a lunch. So we learned, and those are the pearls that we learned. We learned to share our ministry. We learned to have good stewardship with our money and stretch our money as far as we could, and we learned perseverance. And our doors never shut in 2008, and we served over 31,000 lunches that year. I'm going to skip ahead now to 2010 or 2011, and that was a year of slime for me. We still didn't have lots of money. We had more volunteers, but we still were struggling. And uh, I had bought meat for the month and stored it in the, in the freezer there, and the freezer broke. We lost over $1,000 worth of meat. But I learned something there, and this is the pearl that I learned. Publicity is a wonderful tool. We were on the TV, we were in the paper, we were everywhere. Our roots in our community went farther. We had more people volunteering. We had more money coming in. 
That year, we served over 39,000 lunches in 2010. In 2011, we served over 50,000 lunches. So those are the pearls that we learned. Now I'm going to skip ahead to 2020, 2000. And we all know about the slime then, because it affected us here at St. John's, affected us in our personal lives. Everything was turned upside down, as it was at the SAC lunch program. Some of the volunteers had to step away. And thankfully, because we were resourceful, we had volunteers like Kim Lager and Madison Lager who stepped in to take the places of the 90-year-olds who stepped away for health reasons. We, we never shut our doors during this whole time. One of the th other things that was, uh, happened at that time is we had problems in 20 with supply chain issues and with costs. The supply chain issues, as many of you may know, we had problems in our own personal lives getting toilet paper. Um, but bread, bread was a big deal for me at that time in that we would buy, I think, about 100 loaves of bread. We had it given to us, 100 loaves of bread a week. That source for free bread dried up, and we were buying all that bread. But I decided that I was going to Google to find out something, and I Googled um, uh, what is it? Bimbo Bread, that's who the uh, big bread uh, supply people are here. And their headquarters are in Pennsylvania. And believe it or not, they answered the phone. They connected me with somebody down here. And we now have a bread supply and free bread again. We also have a b uh, backup uh, supply for if we can't get enough from Bimbo Bread, we can go to this uh, day old bakery place and get bread. So we resolved that problem. Ingenuity, that was a pearl that we learned there. The other thing, and I'm going to show you, is this lunch. Because the cost of things, as we all know, have gone up. I'm going to show you a typical lunch. We serve lunches now. Uh, when, back in March of 2010, we had to go back to just serving once a, uh, a day instead of twice a day. In June of 2021, we went back to serving twice a day uh, to anybody who is hungry. Uh, what we serve is one drink. Fresh fruit, a lunch, a sandwich. Oh, I have a dessert. And if people ask for an extra lunch, we give them an extra sandwich. Uh, these sandwiches all have, if they're meat sandwiches, they all have two pieces of meat on them. Because when we got a little bit more money, we wanted to make sure the nutrition was there. So the meat sandwiches all have two pieces of meat, so there's more protein for the people. Now, this typical lunch that I'm showing you here now, in 2019, this lunch cost $2.24. Excuse me, that's in 2020. In 2021, it cost $2.27. It's a 36% increase in cost from 2019 to 2021. And Judy predicts that this will even go higher. It will cost us more to serve. So these are some of the things that we have learned. One of the things that we did, though, is that our doors never close. Because we have been good stewards with our money all these years, we were able to handle this. I think one of the things I didn't tell you about, which kind of uh, was the meat problem, we had, it was a supply chain issue, is we could not get meat which is a staple for our program. And we would bulk order meat, but Walmart was stopping bulk orders. So several times during 2020, I had to go to four different Walmarts, this is before we had uh, um, vaccine, with my mask on, and buy every pack of, of uh, sandwich meat that was on the shelf so we could take it down to keep the door open. In 2020, yeah, 2020, we served 33,000 lunches. In 2019, 2021, we've already served over 18,000 lunches. So I, I think that the main thing that I feel for the, the uh, pearls from this last slime issue is that our eyes have been opened. I feel that what it has caused us to do at the SAC lunch program, and I've seen it done here at St. John's, is we've learned there's a different way to serve, and we must continue, because we know that hunger is still out there. 
we know that in 2019, the Urban um, uh, Institute did a study here in Sebastian County, and that study proved that 23% of kids in this county live in poverty. That is three times higher than the national average. Hunger is still here. We have not done our job of stamping out hunger one sack lunch at a time. When I say that our eyes are open, we are looking at not just serving our traditional way, but we are going to do pop-up sack lunch programs. And we are going to take our food closer to the communities, just like we go and do uh, curbside pickup. We are gonna take our lunches out. We've gotten some signage made. We've just been blessed with a grant to like, have uh, um, coolers to take the lunches out. And we're gonna start doing this sometime in 2022. So I ask you for your support. You can see that the roots are deep here, and I thank you very much for that. So I ask you to either, the way we've always done before, is put a check in when you uh, leave today in the uh, basket back there, or next week you will be getting an email from the SAC Lunch Program, and there'll be a little icon that looks like an envelope, and you're gonna click on there. When you open it up, you'll be, thanks to Kenneth Moon, there'll be a button on there and you can hit that button and you can automatically donate to the SAC lunch program. I will then also be sending a letter to all the parishioners. But I think what we have found is perseverance in this program makes us carry on. Our roots keep us stable and we have ingenuity and commitment and Father Lager would say grit. And I thank you for all this. Thank you, Gene. You all do an amazing job. This is an amazing, it's just like the, the crown of outreach for our parish. Thank you for supporting it, and they are wonderful stewards with every penny they get. Uh, no one takes any administrative costs for it. Everything is all donated, and so it is, it is an amazing gift that we're able to share with our world. And now... Let us offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Make good your vows to the Most High.
we stand together. The Great Thanksgiving is found on page 361 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. When we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice. For the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come in you. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving.
together we pray the post-communion prayer on page 365. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have met us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace, and grant us